Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rohan from Big Retro Studio. As you guys must have noticed, I have changed the name of the channel. I think this name fits the channel better. Today we're going to talk about Anbernic model RG35XX. So they gave me this unit for the review and when I checked in the internet, I found out that this goes for just around 55 bucks. That's a pretty decent price. And it's not a very powerful setup. It runs all the way to PlayStation 1, which is uh, similar to our Mio Mini. The boxing looks like a standard Ambernic boxing. Okay, so let's do a small unboxing and see what it's got inside. I love the way Ambernic actually packs everything. So it comes with an instruction manual, a screen protector and some wipes. Adbernic always gives this protector which I always like for almost all their products. So this one actually comes with a 64 GB SD card loaded with games. And it has a 3.5 inch screen which is a 640 by 480 resolution. And uh, do I call this a mini? I'm not really sure because we would have to do some size comparison to find out. This one is rocking a 256 megabytes of RAM. It has a 2100 milliamp hour battery which lasts for around 5 hours. But this one doesn't come with a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. But you are able to connect a wireless controller with a dongle if you like. And you can connect it to the TV or monitor with the HDMI. So that is a good thing. When you look at the buttons, the D-pad, it comes with a rubber membrane. I think all of these buttons are rubber membranes. And it's a bit bouncy and a bit strong. Differ, I would give you that and these menu button select button and start button they are good quality hard plastic and if you look at these face buttons it has a glossy feel to it it's quite different from anything else it is quite shiny it looks pretty nice on the side you have the volume rocker also forgot to mention it has a single mono speaker on the front on the side it has a reset button a power button, two SD card slots and in this one they have already inserted the 64 GB SD card but if you want to add more games you can put right into this. On the top as you can see it has an HDMI port and on the bottom you can see it has a charging port or an OTG port, a headphone jack and on the back it has four trigger buttons and you can make use of this R2 and L2 which the Trimoi Smart didn't come with. So next let's do a small size comparison to see how small this is. Since Anbernic actually calls this their mini retro handheld, does it actually look like a mini? So this is how it looks when you compare it with the Game Boy Color. But the main question is how does it compare it with the Mio Mini? So see how tiny the Mio Mini is. The Mio Mini has a 2.8 inch screen whereas this one has a 3.5 inch screen. So please let me know what is your thoughts. Can you actually call this a mini handheld? I'm sure it's pocketable but is it actually something mini? Because this is what I would call mini. It is super small and compact compared to this one. But anyway, let's turn it on and see what it's got. Okay, didn't take much time to load in. The navigation looks pretty standard. Kind of boring animations, but I think if you go into the setting, you might be able to change something or the other okay as you can see you can change the themes on this I'm not sure why they put angry birds into this but okay buttons you know this and that not much it's pretty standard okay let's go into the game room okay so it's PlayStation and below from 8-bit all the way till the PlayStation. And I see it has a lot of arcade titles. 
Okay, let's play some GBA games. Okay, the speakers are pretty good. I had to turn it down a bit so that I can speak. It's definitely not bad for a mini device. But I've noticed that the aspect ratio is stretched out a bit. But for me, it is okay. I know a lot of people would complain about the aspect ratio being stretched. So that totally depends on you guys. And I don't think there is any option to actually change the aspect ratio right now with the stock firmware. Okay, NES games actually play and look fantastic on this. But then again, if you put Mega Man and see his life bar you might see some small changes on the screen being stretched out a bit but the colors and everything looks pretty awesome so while you're playing you can press the menu button and you can change the level of light you know you can make it all the way to five there are some filters that you can do and you can save the game at any point like any other consoles these days let's try out some street fighter 2 So the maximum it can run is still PlayStation 1. Let's test out a PlayStation game on this. So I'll just turn the speaker to the highest volume it has. And you guys will understand how loud it is. Yep, it's pretty decent. The planets will align and so Okay, it looks like PlayStation games work pretty smoothly on this. It doesn't have any stutter or frame dip. And the screen looks spectacular. Once you hold it in the hand, you know that it's not cheap. They make premium products. Alright, so okay to conclude I would like to say this is a very great pocketable device with a great price excellent build awesome screen I would give you that once you start playing the games you would understand how awesome the screen looks I'm not a big fan of its stock firmware and unfortunately it doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth but size wise it is pocketable and I'm not really sure about the mini tagline they have given to it. When you actually compare it to Miu Mini size wise this is not something which you call as mini. And I hope the community would take notice and do something with the operating system like how they did for the Miu Mini. They came up with the Onion OS and that was awesome. And I'm sure this also has a lot of potential. And in future you can expect some awesome operating system coming on this. I would definitely give it a 4 out of 5. And for me it's actually a decent score. For just a device for 55 bucks. You're getting all the way to PlayStation 1. With a pocketable device which has an awesome screen. And it's a great build. So if you ask me do I recommend this device. I would say yes. 
and that is my personal opinion and i hope you guys have found this video helpful and let me know what is your thoughts about this device on the comments down below please make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and like this video and please stay tuned for such reviews in future take care guys see you next time